The case of Maradio Balogo seems to be finally receiving the attention it deserves as the House of Representatives has begun an investigation into her debt. The House also called on the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, to investigate the matter and prosecute those responsible for her debt. 28-year-old Moradine Balogu, who was stabbed in the neck by the robbers on the 2nd of December 2019, was rushed to the hospital where she was allegedly not attended to because the police report was not presented by those who came to her rescue. Still with me in the studio is Chuka Ihono. Thank you very much for staying with us. Okay, um, her debt is, I mean, as of December, it was a whole lot of um, ripples. Um, and now yeah. on, on Monday, there was this public hearing yeah. by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, right. and they hit hard on hospitals right. uh, about this matter, admission, admitting emergency patients, yeah. uh, saying that they were not only violating natural laws, yes. but the patient's bill of right. Right. Yes. What's your reaction? Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy. For years, I've been very sad when I hear stories of um, people who were rushed to the hospital and they said, bring a police report before we do anything. Uh, instead of actually attending to the person and then you can deal with the police matter later. Um, they, then they would claim that it was the police that tended to turn the matter upside down and they didn't want to have anything to do with police matters that were turned upside down. In other words, the police was actually the reason where the hospitals didn't want to get involved. That's the, so, I mean, let's... let's but is there it, some truth in that? Because we know was, that sometimes I, I, there can be a lot of bottleneck to get to the police station to drop reports or to get reports and all of that. No, it's even more like the police inferring that the hospital may have had a part to play in the crime, if it was a crime, but uh, uh, if there was a crime behind the matter, oh well, there's always a crime because a stabbing is a <laughs> crime. But what I mean is, if the person, suppose the person who was brought in was actually a criminal who had been injured, they, they never wanted to get involved because the police would turn it around and by the time you're done, you find yourself almost begging the police to let you go because this has nothing to do with you. You were merely trying to stop a man from dying after which you can hand him over. And so a lot of hospitals did not want that. Uh, I found that a bit surprising though because doctors are very educated people. Uh, they spend long time studying and their course is very long, longer than almost everybody else's course. So I find that I thought there would be people who would be eloquent enough to, to find their way through such, you know, simple things as police harassment. But that they... Police harassment, is, is it, it simple, not, really, no, in this can, country? It, I, I think it can be, because you see, it's the, it, there's, the, there are laws that govern, the natural law that, we're talking, that, you, that you mentioned governs this matter. Simple, a man is dying or a woman is dying. See if you can stabilize her or save her, and then let the, then if you're not the specialist to actually deal with the matter, you can then refer. But, you know, but the police should know that you have no involvement other than that, you know, whatever. Okay, so the Lagos uh, um, State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice uh, said um, at that public hearing, yes. compulsory treatment and care for victims of gunshots Act 2017 provides for compulsory treatment yep. and care of victims of yep. gunshots. He went on to say to think that uh, there are adequate legislations in place to address the problems and it's still being violated. He said <laughs> it's unfortunate. My job is why should we be describing it as unfortunate even now? Who is responsible or should be responsible for the enforcement of these uh, legislation? Exactly. I thought, his, I thought his English was very poor because he's, he's indicting himself. Um, but let's, let's move beyond that because I'm sure he probably didn't mean it exactly as he said it. it he can't say it's unfortunate because somebody ought to be the one to make sure these things are obeyed. Okay, and just, just, just hold on to that thought. Um, yeah. Let's go on a quick break. Um, when we come back, the conversation will continue. Do stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we're now joined uh, by legal practitioner Libora Soshoma. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. So I'll just put you on the hot seat immediately. The State um, Commissioner for Justice has reacted at a public hearing um, of this uh, lady 
and he is saying that to think there is adequate legislation in place to address the problems and there's still violations is unfortunate. My question is, same thing I was asking Chuka before we went on the break, is whose responsibility is it to enforce it? Uh, you just said it now, the man whose responsibility is to enforce the law is saying that it's unfortunate that the law is being violated. And so if at that level, um, the chief law officer of the state, who is to you know, enforce laws, is saying that laws are violated and, uh, and that the best he could do is to say it's unfortunate, uh, then what would the common man do? I, I had expected that the chief law officer would be talking tough that um, we would take this any longer, we will not waste life on the excuses that laws that are there to protect lives and properties are not being complied with, and that will prosecute, you know, whether the police that demand for police reports or the hospitals that demand for police report before treating, you know, such patients. But when a, a, a chief law officer says it's unfortunate, um, apart from being self-indicting, self it also shows that um, our, our political office holders, some of them really don't understand the responsibilities and duties of their offices. Um, Shika, let me ask you this. Um, we do know that hospitals are also business ventures as it stands in Nigeria. They, they have huge responsibility and we have stories uh, of uh, patients who are treated and they abscond. They don't pay the bills that they are supposed uh, to pay. How do we reconcile uh, that with the ethos um, of their profession when they still have a business to protect in order to serve others who would come to them? Well, I didn't know when when they say people escaped. Um, I didn't know. I, I didn't know how the law, um, how what rights they have to hold people back who have not paid. Uh, you know, because I'm sure if you promise to pay, you will be released. Um, and that in itself is the loophole. Uh, and then once you're released, it just depends on basically the country we are in, how tight is the system, the legal system, the systems for redress, the ways you collect um, debts, uh, how tight is it? And that's what basically tells us whether or not these hospitals will survive let you know this thing of people absconding um, but in a matter like this lady um, who was obviously dying um, I, I don't see how she would have run away as you know I, I mean th this is a case of life and death to stabilize her life uh, and um, also what's the insurance nature of these circumstances just, yeah. because really this has to be dealt with in some way where the insurance is involved Mm -hmm. The issue of insurance is a different... Yeah, but, but, but really, um, I think it's failure on the part of government and failure on the part of the hospitals. Because first and foremost, you, you look at... Um, before you look at the business angle, you need to first look at the life-saving angle. You know, they, they need to go together, but one supersedes the other. Because even in... Um, in legal practice, there are some, some budgets that you set aside to handle indigent matters. Just the same way that um, legal, the government also, in most cases, would be responsible for indigent people. There are some form of responsibility, uh, cushioning, that government also gives. And then, we know how these hospitals, in some cases, also draw debts from some of these indigent patients. Not to talk of a situation where, you know, you have a, a dying patient. You can treat that patient to stabilize the patient before you now begin to talk about, you know, resources. I, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm very, very sure that if that's why the, the um, state attorney general is, is saying on, is unfortunate, the NMA also would tell you that that is not the practice. Yeah. That if practice would be to stabilize the patient before you begin to talk about funds, you know. And, and so this, this is not the first time. The, the question is. should be, people that violate these rules, if you know, appropriate sanctions are not melted That was out exactly where I was going the to NMA, go to, yes. the disciplinary committee of the NMA, and then the state's government involved nothing will happen i had a, a, a situation where you know a woman died at childbirth of high blood pressure after the husband has spent so much 
And um, I, I, I approached the family and I said, look, we can take up this matter. Because from your narration, I see some form of negligence on the part of the medical handlers. And then everybody around said, oh, you see, somebody that had died had died. Uh, it won't bring back the dead. You know, somebody else will just lose their job. And, you know, so we have this, this attitude of let it be, live them for God. And so when you live them for God, there is no opportunity to, to deal with the issues and melt out appropriate sanctions. Why people are, people comply with rules and regulation in senior societies because that they know that there is no abexa. Yeah. Chuka. This is not the first time we're getting public hearings yeah. like this. Um, do you expect this one to be any different, to change anything? Um, I only expect it to change if there's anyone, anyone who, within the space of time of this um, inquiry and whatever, pushes for maximum penalties for whoever is found to be at fault, which is the hospital, by the way, if the hospital is found to be at fault. The hospital, of course, is giving excuses. Oh, we looked at the patient, and then we told them what to do and where to go. And that's a typical answer. You know, Nigerians are becoming used to this thing where we just say, you know, when, when you've done something wrong, you just cover it up. If this is a cover-up, I want something drastic done. I don't know legally what can be done. If there's manslaughter charges, incompetence, whatever it is, I know it can be murder because yeah, he didn't kill her. Voluntary. Yes. Okay. But, but the question is... Somebody should go to well, I, I'm actually told we're out of time, but there's this particular question I'd like you to um, um, share your thoughts on. The House of Representatives set up a committee when this thing happened in December, just barely days after the incident and social media and noise uh, about it. Not much has been had um, of that That's uh, the area I, I was actually then. going to. Yeah. That Do you know anytime, anything? Anytime, even resolutions from... The Senate and the House of Rep, the federal government had told you that they are mere advisory. So if you set up a committee, and what comes out of a committee, a resolution. And, and so if we truly want to deal with issues like this, I should see investigation from the Nigerian police. And then um, or the office of, of the Antony General col collaborating with you know, the, the Nigerian police. And then seeing somebody yes. you know, um, on the dock for you know, negligence. Yeah. Criminal negligence. Until punishment is meted out. That's yeah, but when you say. set up committees like this, it's a way of placating everybody, win win situation, and then until the next happens. I must say thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. It's thank appreciated. And of course, thank you for staying with us thus far. We'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be given my take. The Nigerian Medical Association, NME, has directed all medical personnel currently on strike nationwide to end the strike action immediately. The national president of the NME, Dr. Francis Faduyile, while addressing newsmen in Abuja, said premature end to the industrial action by medical doctors is part of its efforts to help the federal government contain the spread of the coronavirus. Dr. Faduile urged all medical personnel to return to duty and respond to the ongoing national emergency as the association will continue to reach out to government to reach its demand. We direct all medical associations that have, that have declared industrial actions against their management to suspend all actions as the national enemy shall take over the dispute and interact with the different organs and agencies of the government. In this regard, ARDs of Federal Capital Territory Authority, Gombe State, Exud Park Lane, and Kaduna State, as well as NMA Cross River State, are directed to report back to work and treat Nigerians. This gesture is geared to treat fellow Nigerians, notwithstanding the inhuman treatment method on our members nationwide. We call on the government to provide all the necessary personal protective equipment, PPE, to the different hospitals so that health personnel can adequately and appropriately manage their patients. The advisory on coronavirus is plentiful, from hand washing to avoiding touching and large gathering to now staying at home unless you absolutely have to go out. It would probably get to a point when markets may have to be shut down. 
it will be tricky for many of us to take this all in and manage with the economic realities, especially where families depend on daily hustle to survive. Hence, it is extremely important that palliatives need to be spelt out clearly for the many that have these fears. Government must announce early their plans on how people will find meals to eat and other basic essentials to enable them to stay healthy. Why did the government work for us? We as the people have to be mindful that this pandemic is uncharted waters for our leaders and across the globe we see them struggle to find ways to keep us safe. What they deserve from all of us is support and constructive criticism at this time. Thank you for watching. It's always a pleasure to have your company on the program. Please join us again next time. Have a lovely weekend.